Let's meet a Lymington-based offshore racer who's about to set off in the Mini Transat. Now, Dan Ditch is here with us this evening. Dan, I've got to ask you, because Tracy didn't understand. She thought a Mini Transat. Shelley didn't she- understand. Shelley Tracy didn't understand. would be horrified if you said that about her. She- <laughs> Shelley-, Shelley is a powerboat racer and therefore doesn't understand sailing at all. So she thought Mini Transat meant you just go halfway there and come back again. No, Can you right. explain to Shelley, please, exactly what the Mini Transat is? But OK, the Mini Transat is the name of the boat and the fleet. Um, we've got one aim through the racing, it's a two year campaign and the end goal is uh, the transatlantic um, and it's called nicknamed the Mini because they're small boats, they're only 20, 21 foot long. Right. Um, so the, the race picked up the name basically. Right, so you, they're just smaller boats yep. and you're still all going to cross the Atlantic in a race. Yeah, that's the idea. Thank you, I'm very clear on that now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, I'm satisfied you. Yes, carry good, on. Good, well, we're improving. <laughs> we tre- keep trying to educate Shelley, write a film about that. Now, <laughs> Dan, it, I mean, it's a great idea, but I mean, the build-up to this, what have you been doing to build up to um, make you feel confident enough to take it on? It's a full two-year campaign. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the boat beginning of last year, um, did a refit to sort of customise the mm-hmm. boat for me for how I sail and how I want it set up. Um, and then this year I spent the whole year down in France, mm-hmm. um, been based down there in a town called Lorient yeah. um, in the Brittany area. Um, and there's a whole circuit that goes on along the coast. Um, this year I've taken part in five races already. Mm-hmm. Um, they're a combination of double and single handed races um, and normally three to five days long. We go offshore. Um, and we have to do um, a thousand mile qualifi- uh, qualification, um, which takes place from uh, leaves from La Rochelle in France, and then we do a loop and we go up to the coast of Ireland, mm-hmm. uh, turn a mark at Ireland, come back around the Scillies, and then back down to La Rochelle again. Um, and that's the qualification. Um, and the more races we get in, the better our chances are of qualifying, because there's only 85 places for the final event in 2011. And it, it is remarkable, isn't it, that you can get 85 of these 21-footers yep. all setting yeah, off together yeah. across the Atlantic. It's quite scary on the start line. Um, <laughs> but there's, um, uh, it's fiercely competitive, especially amongst the French. Mm-hmm. There's not many other Europeans going for it. There's, last year they had around uh, 70 French guys, and right. the rest was made up of outsiders. Right. So, it's, so uh, how do you find racing against the French? It's good. They're very, very good. They get a good reputation, um, mm. and they deserve it. The 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 top guys, the mm. guys to beat, um, and it's nice to go out there and do well against them as well. Well, why why aren't we the guys to beat? Because they grow up with sailing. They they sail from school. Um, all the all the kids' heroes, rather than looking at footballers mm. and looking at other people, they look at sailors. You go into like the stores down in France, mm. and there's pictures of sailors up in the clubs and everything. Um, and that's really interesting isn't it it's yeah. different cultures and different sports they get a lot back more from from, from sailing they, yeah. yes i mean it, it's it always frustrated me really racing over there the the fact that they used to get so much attention yeah, yeah they're in the media um, every day that's and, right you know, it's, it's big business for them and so of course young people are drawn towards it yeah yeah so your mini boat so you bought this boat second hand i did yes and uh what was what's her history um it's done the transit twice already Is with it? the french guy yeah mm-hmm. um it's built in uh, 2000 right so it's one of the older boats um it's got a fixed keel with water ballast whereas right. a lot of the modern boats which i'm trying to compete with have swing keels mm. um it's a big difference on power when we get to reaching mm. like power reaching big kites and stuff um but if I sell well, then I can I can keep up and still get good results. And where do you go from the minis? Um, the aim is for the 60s, and over the next couple of years, I want to do a lot of um, trimaran sailing over yeah. in Sweden, hopefully. But the ultimate goal is always the 60. Yeah, for, for everybody, I think. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, I have to say, they're darn hard work, too. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I look at the minis now with envy, because I think, oh, what <laughs> lovely to be able to sell one of those boats. It wouldn't take me half an hour to hoist the mainsail. No, no it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but before that, I mean, how did you get into sailing? I've grown up sailing all my life. So um, you, you're like the French, then. I mean, yeah, you, you've yeah. grown up with sailing. Yeah, dinghy sailing. Um, home from school in the evening, straight out sailing. Mm-hmm. Sailing at the weekends, racing, competing. Um, and then moved abroad with the intention of I moved abroad to work on bigger boats right. to earn money and get better experience. But you didn't get sailing at school as part of the curriculum. No. Oh, you see, that's where we lose it, isn't it? I mean, the French get it as part of their curriculum. We do not here. No. Sailing is not seen as a as a sort of school sport. No, not at all. It's a terrible shame. I did. Um, I did um, 
sport for for a, de- a degree later on, and it wasn't even an option yeah. to to uh, include know, in that. That's a shame. So when you set off, uh, 2011 is the transat. Right. But in a month's time, I've got the Azores race, which is then a smaller transat, which goes to the Azores Islands. Um, then we have a stopover and then back again. Right. Well, Dan, good luck with it. Thank you very much. Um, we hope to hear more of you. Okay. At least we'll be following you because we know how to find you, even if the newspapers don't come. <laughs> Thank you very, much. very good luck and uh, hope you do well, even if it's not a new boat. Plenty of us take older boats around yes. the world. Yeah, so true. why can't you take <laughs> an older boat across well. the Atlantic? <laughs> <laughs> Let's meet a Lymington-based offshore racer who's about to set off in the Mini Transit. Now, 